Hey everyone, welcome to the Stride to Freedom podcast. My name is Russell Benaroya, and I'm the co-founder of Stride Services, a virtual back office bookkeeping and accounting firm serving hundreds of clients around the United States. This podcast is designed to help small business owners focus on growth and innovation. In other words, focus on those things that inspired you to start your business in the first place. We call it your genius zone. We do our job on this podcast when business owners feel like they have the trust and confidence to build the right team of partners around them that will help them grow. Thanks for joining. Let's go. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Stride to Freedom podcast, where we help business leaders get and stay in their genius zone. What is your genius zone? Your genius zone is that thing that you do that feels effortless to you, where you lose track of time, where you're truly achieving your highest and best use. My name is Russell Benaroya, and I am your host. The Stride to Freedom podcast is sponsored by Stride Services. Stride Services is an outsourced back office bookkeeping and accounting firm that helps business leaders with a thirst for learning achieve their highest and best use. So let's jump in. I am super excited today to welcome Bill Black to our conversation. Hey, Bill, how are you? Doing well, Russell. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Oh my gosh, it's such a pleasure, Bill. Bill is the founder and CEO of a company called Focus Planet, which is an IT consulting firm that helps manage service providers operate at their peak performance. And for those of you that might be listening to the show that don't know MSPs, like think um, outsourced IT services firms. Uh, there are so many of them <laughs> throughout the United States. I think there's something like 20 to 40,000 uh, outsourced IT services firms that are in the business of helping other businesses manage their security, uh, manage their infrastructure, manage their network and architecture, and help their employees operate at their peak performance. And what I love about Focus Planet, and the reason that I wanted to have Bill on today is because so often companies jump into solutioning before they have established the right plumbing that is going to be required for that solution that they implement to be successful as they grow. And Focus Planet is very much in the plumbing business. They help MSPs uh, architect their business and their business processes so that they can serve and grow their client base and better support their clients. Was that a reasonably good explanation, Bill? Fantastic. That's perfect explanation. Uh, okay. I'm uh, like your marketing department now. Um, there you go. The, <laughs> um, the, the other reason that I wanted to have Bill on is because Bill is an entrepreneur too. Bill is a business leader. And more than anything else that has impressed me in my conversations with him is this is an individual who leads with heart. He is a giver. Uh, he knows the value of creating connection, and he really is a role model for how to build an organization from a place of purpose, right? Why I do what I do versus just what do I do? And it's a lot easier to operate in your genius zone um, when you are inspired and passionate about the thing that you do. And so let's jump in, Bill. Exactly. Fantastic. Okay. Thanks. Um, maybe it's a good first question. Why are you passionate? about the work that you do. If I, if I, if I characterized plumbing in as sexy of a term right. as possible. Right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I've always been in a position to be able to help someone, you know, my entire life one way or another, you know, and when I, I used to have an MSP of my own and mm -hmm. I grew that company, I had it for about 13 years and I sold it. One of the things that really bothered me during the entire time I ran that company was that we had these magnificent tools to work with. In this case, I used ConnectWise, uh, ConnectWise Manage. I had this perfect tool to work with that handled, you know, everything from quote to cash, sales opportunities, uh, you know, purchasing, ticketing, scheduling, project management, invoicing, everything. Uh, the only problem was, is that it took a little bit to get it set up and it took a little bit to, you know, it took some time to really get in and understand how the tool works. And it, 
I was not, never able to find someone that would actually get in there and make the tool work for me. I found a lot of people that would tell me what I needed to do, but I wasn't able to find anybody that would actually do the work. And so that's why I started this latest company, uh, Focus Planet, just to be able to help people do the work. And um, when you were running that MSP, again, thinking about you being in your genius zone and doing what you were uniquely positioned to do as the owner of that MSP, what did not having that partner to help you actually do the work do for you, do for you or not do for you when it came to prioritizing where you put your energy and trying to build your business? Right. Yeah. So that's a great question because it's, it's something that I still see to this day with clients that we have and uh, people that I talk to in the industry. Uh, they, there are so many people that have very talented technicians, engineers, project managers uh, that, that are utilizing their talents internally. They're, they're, they're building their own tools internally instead of helping their clients, which is the whole reason they're in business. So we see people that, you know, very, very talented that are spending their time trying to build out their own internal tools instead of letting a professional just come in and build it out. Uh, and so in, in my case, you know, I found that I would sit and, and just focus on trying to learn how to use this tool and focus on trying to set it up, especially when I came back from some sort of an event. And I would spend this time and, and the, the clients would suffer. The, the client, the, the service delivery would be impacted because they'd have to wait longer because I was trying to figure out how to send an automatic message with a ticket or something like that. So, you know, it, overall, just just using billable time to do internal work w- was challenging. Business partner and I like to say that there are no expenses in business. There are only investments. There are only investments, and we choose to make those investments. And those investments are designed right, to have an to have an ROI. And so, when you make an investment in a in a new employee, or you make an investment in a, a consulting firm, or you make an investment in marketing. What is the investment that, like, if you were sending a message to the MSP community um, and certainly to the clients you've worked with, what is the investment that they've chosen to make it, as it relates to the intended return on that investment from working with a partner like you? So, when when a client invests in us. Uh, mm. We become a part of their team and we're just like their ConnectWise experts just down the hall, the ConnectWise department. We uh, are able to resolve any questions they have to set up things much quicker than anyone internally could because we know the answers before we even start. The investment to them is uh, they're able to utilize 100% of this tool and in doing so provide the services and see the metrics that are important to them as they as they run their business and look at you know how their how their client services and client and service delivery is being performed. Mm-hmm. And you had mentioned you've mentioned ConnectWise Manage a couple of times for those that are listening to the show that don't know ConnectWise Manage. It is a PSA or professional services automation tool that houses all the workflow around ticketing and services and agreements in order for an MSP to better manage a client relationship and manage their business. Did I capture that? You did. It's basically a business operating system. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And do you find, Bill, that prospective clients are coming to you when their their house is on fire? I like to say, uh, you may, if you have rats in your house, you're like, whatever it takes, like, help me now. My, or um, if you have a dent in your car, right, that's a little bit different. Like, I'd like to fix the dent, but I can still drive. What's your experience? Right. Uh, we have both, right? Mm-hmm. So we have people that are coming to us with new cars asking us how to drive it. Yeah. And we have people that have been in a fender bender and say, you know, we're not able to get, we're not able to get this particular function to work the way we want it to. Can you help us? And then we have people who have a, a terribly crumbling uh, or complicated foundation and they need to simplify. Uh, we, we have all sorts of companies that we work with 
uh, in, in all different stages of company growth. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. yeah. and, and I imagine uh, just given what I, I, I know about you, you have to turn on a, a different level of emotional quotient depending on where they are in the stack. So maybe when they come to you and like it's a you know major car accident, like your mm -hmm. your empathy level goes up, maybe you become right. more of a guide and a counselor uh, right. <laughs> because right. they're yeah. looking for for some psychological. Exactly. Help. Yeah. I mean, if somebody's got the, you know, if somebody's got, <clears throat> they've just purchased that new car, they're all excited and they know what it can do. They just don't know how to do it. Uh, in this case, it's the same, but there are a lot of times when uh, uh, clients come to us and they are very frustrated with trying to make their systems come together and trying to create this consolidated, cohesive environment that their entire team can understand and work with. And, you know, we come back and say, hey, you know, don't worry, we've got this under control. We're going to figure it all out. It might take a little time, but we'll figure it all out and everything will be just fine. So and then we're there for them along every step of the way uh, to support the changes and to train as needed and uh, just take care of everything that they need. In that, yeah, in so that, that gets to 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 a, a, a segue and an important point around how you deliver your your service. So maybe walk me through um, what a a client uh, experiences when they they call you up in the various states that they're they're in. Right. So you know it depends, right? So if if somebody let's take worst case scenario, uh, worst case scenario. You know, it's a large client and they've got different, uh, you know, people doing a lot of different things. And we just kind of need to bring everybody together and get them on one system. Uh, what we do is we just start meeting with them and meeting with the different uh, stakeholders in, in the company uh, to, just to make sure that we understand. First of all, the most important thing for me to understand is your culture. Who, you know, wh what is your culture like? Who Who are the you know, who are the people that are working in these different roles? And then once we understand the culture and we, want, when we understand where they want to go, what they want to be when this is done, uh, then we're able to just take them and start creating a game plan. Uh, and we create that game plan in their system so they can see how the system works by using the system. So we create the game plan and we start meeting with everyone as needed. And then we uh, we'll test drive the changes and then we'll turn around and implement the changes and train everybody on how, how it works. Mm -hmm. So the engagement is, you know, it starts out with a lot of just discovery, a lot of just answering questions or, you know, listening to questions, uh, trying to formulate the best answers and creating uh, the game plan to execute going forward. I love that you started with culture, right? We start yeah. with culture. I mean, the most important elements of business traction are within this arena of cultural design and right. how the business is structured in such a way to help everybody who is there achieve their highest and best use. And in many ways, you serve to help unlock that for them. Right, right. One thing that really impresses me about uh, Focus Planet, which by the way, this is not a commercial for Focus Planet. So, you know, I just want to be clear. Uh, this is just good learning around yeah. business model design is that you're fairly focused. Um, you, yeah. you seem to, and correct me if I'm wrong, but prioritize ConnectWise Manage. Uh, yeah. Obviously, there's a big market out there of MSPs, managed service providers that are using ConnectWise Manage. Um, but you could theoretically broaden out to other systems. So you've, you've elected to stay fairly focused and stake your, your claim um, on that system. I'm curious if you could talk to me a little bit about the benefit of focus and how you've considered it over, over the years. Yeah. Um, so over the years, I've, you know, I've learned that when you do focus uh, on one thing, uh, you're able to to better manage your stress levels because <laughs> you really know what you're doing. You know everything there is to know about this one thing. Uh, the only thing that really gives you any stress is, uh, you know, hitting deadlines and, you know, dealing with difficult personality types and things like that. Mm -hmm. And 
you know, over the years, you kind of learn how to deal with those things as well. You know, a deadline doesn't always mean it's an actual deadline. Uh, Mm -hmm. It means that we've got to make sure everything's in line in the system that we know very well, uh, you know, to hit that goal. And the difficult personality types, well, that's that's life. (laughs) There's going to be difficult people. Darn humans. humans. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, so in order to in order to um, to learn the most about a system, you, you really have to focus on it. And and we've tried in the early years, we tried to branch out and look at other systems and, and look at other things that we might be able to help work with. And we still might as it relates to some third party integrations with our system. But for the for the most part, you know, we intend to stay focused on uh, on the ConnectWise environment. And uh, I feel that it's a very impressive piece of software. It always has been. Uh, there's a lot of growth potential with it. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm excited about the future, you know, for ConnectWise. And so that's the reason we, we want to stay focused on it. We, we want to be the, the ConnectWise experts. I appreciate that. Uh, we have a saying that system proliferation is expensive. And what you shared is there's a, there's a, a distinction to be made around business stress, which is there's mm-hmm. systems related stress, and then there's organizational or organization related stress or client related stress. So knowing where your stress points are in the organization and how to mitigate or neutralize those super valuable. And I see you've chosen to mitigate the systems related stress through focus. I, I really like that. That's cool. Uh, your, your LinkedIn, uh, says you are a go-giver, which is probably from the book by Bob Berg, probably go-giver. You're also a business matchmaker. I, I I'm curious if you could share, a, which is cool. I'm curious if you could share a little bit about you because there's so much of you that manifests in what focus planet is. And the fact that you elected to identify yourself with this go, go-giver moniker, business matchmaker moniker right. also says a lot about you. So I'd love to hear it. I don't know where to start, Russell. <laughs> <laughs> I just threw a ton so, at you on that one. Yeah. Over the years, uh, you, you meet a lot of people and, uh, you know, I like to attend events. I like to talk with people, you know, and, and really understand where they're coming from. And, uh, you know, in doing so, you know, you run across people from all areas and, and, and people need help in different ways, in different resources. And so from, uh, from the go-giver perspective, you know, I'd rather, you know, I, I really would rather help people. Um, that's what, that's what my life intention is, is to help others, you know, and uh, from the business matchmaker perspective, there's no better way to help others than to bring them the resources they need to have a discussion with, um, in, in, you know, in our system, I've built this, you know, we have, we have a thing in there called tracks and tracks are automated things that can happen. And and part of the automation is it can send an email. So I have a list of tracks that send emails that introduces people. So when someone comes to me and says, well, I really need some help with uh, getting my accounting squared away and, and make it more efficient and clean. Then I'll drop a track on them that says, hey, meet my friend Russell. Mm. <laughs> so over the years, you know, there, there are times when I'm not able to help someone directly, but I, I, it seems like 100% of the time I know someone that can help. Mm-hmm. That's kind of where the business matchmaker comes from. So, yeah. If um, if we turn that table and I laid down some tracks, I laid down a track and mm-hmm. I wanted to be a business matchmaker back to Focus Planet, mm-hmm. what would I be looking for or what would you guide me to say, hey, Russell, you should ask these, these questions or when a individual answers it in these particular questions in this way, that might be a good trigger for you to lay down the Focus Planet track. Right, right. So, you know, you're in the financial space and Mm -hmm. a lot of what we do uh, deals with all the work that takes place in a system prior to it ever landing in uh, like QuickBooks, right? Right. So if if you're working with someone and they say, you know, and and you find out it's taking them a long time to do invoicing, for example, 
they probably need to talk to us because it shouldn't take long to do invoicing in in their system. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, if if they're if they're being challenged with being totally overwhelmed all the time and never have time to schedule or to get you the information you need, uh, and and their overwhelm is is being created because of their operational issues, then they probably need to talk to us. You know, those kinds of things, things that, uh, you know, where they where they it just takes a lot to get the information they need, or the, I'm mm-hmm. sorry, the information you need uh, mm-hmm. to help them out. Mm-hmm. Then you drop a track on them and introduce them. Awesome. Yeah. I love, I love, I love it. You kind of institutionalized business matchmaking. Um, yeah. You made it very efficient, which, it's which efficient, I love. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's cool. Um, what is, as a, as a business owner, as an entrepreneur yourself, uh, you're running every day to, mm-hmm. to build focus planet. But what's something that you you wish or would 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 like people to ask you about your your business? That I, I knew this was going to be a hard one for you because you yeah. and I went back and forth on it. But but what do you think's interesting to share about um, being a business leader and trying to grow a business that you don't get a chance to really? answer because nobody ever asks you. They think Bill's got it all together, right? He's yeah. doing his thing. Yeah. I don't know. I think I think one of the biggest things that that I learned uh, late in life and you know seven businesses later <laughs> <laughs> is that you're not the business. The business is the team that you have doing the work and representing you. And so the culture of of your team and and the kind of people that become a part of the, of the family is, is so important. And uh, I, I think if, if, if people would just understand that it's okay to, to have a list of things to do, but it's also okay to share that list with someone else to get it done. Mm. Right. So mm. as a business owner, starting a new business, you know, uh, it's it's not good that that you're trying to do all of your own accounting and all of your own system setup and managing your own equipment. You know, it's it's not good doing that because you're not focusing on growing the business. Mm-hmm. And like I said, you know, all these businesses later, I'm, <laughs> I learned it too late in life. But but it's 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 one of the things that people when and if that that ever comes up. That's one of the things that I always like to talk about with them. Not sure that's the answer you were looking for, but. Oh, I think it's a great, great answer. What I'm, what I'm hearing you say is there's some learnings that's, that can really only happen through the journey that we're on and the experiences that we, mm-hmm. we have every, every business that we've endeavored into is an opportunity to learn more about ourselves and how we want to conduct ourselves, how we want to be the organizations we want to create. And what it sounds like is focus planet for you is the result of, of that learning uh, to create an environment that is um, enabling uh, people that you bring into it, whether that be clients or employees to to thrive and be successful and achieve their highest and best use, right? Stride to Freedom podcast, right? Why we're here. Stride to Freedom, yeah. Uh, exactly. That's awesome. Uh, because you've been in the industry for so long, though, is my last last question. Uh, because you've been in the business for so long, uh, where, are, where are we on the evolution on the curve? Like what, what environment are we in right now? Is this like a great time to be an MSP or are there some unique challenges that... MSPs are facing either at a, at a macro level, at, at an economic level, or relative to tools or expectations of clients. I'm curious if you could share some perspective. Yeah, um, it, in my opinion, right? Uh, I think and it's a one. great time. Yeah, uh, I think it's a great time to be an MSP. I think that uh, we have seen so many changes over the years and so many improvements in the technologies and the tools that are available. Um, the biggest thing is that there are so many little challenges that you can you can overcome by getting the right people in place and you know challenges like you know security security is huge right now and uh, there are a lot of people that are working on becoming certified and and you know fully licensed and everything to, to, to take care of security so you can reach out to them um, you know there's there's not as much the, the technology is changing. Computers don't break like they used to. 
Uh, that being said, though, you still, as an MSP, you still have a, a responsibility to your clients to let let them let you be the IT authority to bring them the, the latest in technology to help them help you develop or help them develop a strategy that you can work with them on for their for their future IT needs. I think that uh, you know another challenge I'm seeing is uh, there's there it seems to be a hiring issue right now. There there seems to be you know people looking for help, uh, qualified help. And the, the, the quandary is there are a lot of people looking for work. And so there are people looking for help and people looking for work. And you would think that there'd be a match, a match. there, right? <laughs> yeah. So I happen to know a guy that can help. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Business matchmaker. So yeah, that's exactly. the kind of thing that we, that's the kind of thing that, in my opinion, is kind of interesting to watch, uh, you know, watch what's going on. The market is, is saturated with a lot of people that can help and it's just a matter of uh you know making that match getting everybody together Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. one last thing i I just i don't want to miss the point because i want it to be clear for everybody is that um when when you bring a focus planet into your organization uh, the the intended benefit is what what would you share that you as a partner provide for your clients when they make a decision to, to partner with you? I think um, the, the biggest intended benefit is they can kind of relax a little bit and have peace of mind that their system is going to, you know, take a breath, relax, starting tomorrow or starting whatever, whenever the yeah. date is, we've got somebody that's going to take care of this for us. We've got a, we've now have a complete department ready to go. That's going to take care of this for us. They're going to help us with getting the, everything set up. They're going to help us when somebody needs to take a day off and we've got to run this invoice through. They're going to help us with whatever. And knowing that they can help us they, and, they, and they can help us not just knowing what the software does, but also knowing that the people on the Focus Planet team have industry knowledge and industry experience. So they know what we're going through. Mm -hmm. So there's always somebody in your corner. You seem to have assembled a pretty notable team of, of experts. It's like a Delta force special ops. (laughs) Is that fair? It's it's a small team and very experienced, right? Mm -hmm. Bill, it is such a pleasure to spend time with you. Is there anything I didn't ask you that's important for you to share or communicate? Um, I don't think so. I'm, I'm, it, it's been a great time. I really appreciate you having me on. It's uh, it's fun. So yeah. Well, Anytime. the Stride to Freedom podcast is a selfish podcast for me to learn about others. It's a real gift and a real opportunity. And I, I wanted to do it because I wanted the community to understand that the pieces the pieces of the puzzle associated with business leadership aren't always obvious. It's not always about, oh, I'm just going to buy this piece of software and I'm going to automate these things and it's going to be great. There's there's oftentimes for bigger systems like ConnectWise Manage work that happens behind the scenes to really optimize it. And I don't want business leaders to shortcut it just because they have a short-term anxiety to just get going, get going, get going, Mm -hmm. because the long-term implications of not being thoughtful about how you set it up in the first place can be really costly down the road. And that's right. where our focus planet comes in and, and the way that you approach it, Bill, with your, 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 your empathy and partnership related approach uh, is very, is very comforting. And I appreciate it. Great. Thank, thank you. you. Thank well, you. thank you. Th- yeah. It's such a pleasure. Well, thank you everybody uh, for joining today. I'm looking forward to our next episode of the stride to freedom podcast and special thanks to Bill Black from focus planet for being on the show. Thanks and have a great day. Thanks, Bill. Thank you.